Welcome to the Gladwell Laboratories video on immediate non-functional temporization of a maxillary premolar. In this case, we're going to be applying the inclusive tooth replacement solution components to the temporization and restoration of a missing maxillary first premolar, in this case, tooth number five. The first thing that will be utilized will be the prosthetic stent that was provided, uh, verifying the general outline of it, as well as you can see here, the tooth has been placed into the proposed osteotomy site. The prosthetic stent is then tried in for fit to ensure a snug, passive fit. And the planned osteotomy site is confirmed utilizing the probe into the hole that's been pre-drilled by Gladwell Laboratories. After profound anesthesia has been achieved, a full thickness mucoperiosteal flap is reflected utilizing a sulcular incision that Glatt's seen here, generally carrying the incision one or two teeth uh, on either side of the planned osteotomy site. Then careful blunt dissection is carried out of the soft tissue to ensure no lacerations or tearing or undo stress on the flap so as not to compromise the blood supply. Again, the palatal tissue is then reflected slightly in the, uh, immediately around the osteotomy site. This is designed to protect the soft tissue once the surgical guide has been placed back in and the osteotomy drills are introduced. Care, of course, should be taken to avoid any potential palatal vital structures, such as the middle alveolar nerve, in this case. Once this has been accomplished and the flap is reflected, the prosthetic stent is again replaced in there and fitted with finger pressure to assure tightness. And the first step of the osteotomy is completed utilizing the lance drill from Glidewell Direct. This is carried to depth. Once this initial drill has been completed, the prosthetic stent is removed and the osteotomy is continued. In this case, utilizing the 2.3 millimeter drill being careful to retract the palatal tissue as well as the buccal tissue to ensure no soft tissue lacerations. As these are done freehand, want to use the depth lines on the drills as your indicator for your depth. Once the initial osteotomy has been completed, the drill is placed in there to confirm the angulation and position, and a periapical film like that shown here is taken to confirm orientation to the adjacent teeth and the sinus as well. And we can see that we are precisely where we want to be in terms of location and direction. Once that's been confirmed, the osteotomy site is expanded, utilizing the 2.8 drill. As we are planning on using a 3.7, the 2.8 will be our final drill for the soft bone protocol. The implant itself is then introduced utilizing the serrated carrier seen here. First by hand, torque down until the implant engages the bone and causes the carrier to shear off. And once this occurs, the handpiece hex driver is then placed and can be placed to final depth. This is allowed to continue until the driver itself disengages once initial resistance is met. Once it's done, the final delivery of the implant is carried out by hand torquing to ensure that we have 35 newton centimeters, it's confirmed here, for our initial stability. And as all the components are aligned based on the hex being aligned to the buckle, it's imperative to confirm that this is the case. As you can see here with the hex driver in place, the hex is in fact oriented towards the direct buckle. Once the implant is fully seated and confirmation has been made of the location and position of the implant, the flap is irrigated copiously with Paradex to remove any debris that may cause postoperative complications, such as subperiosteal abscess or other infection. In this case, we've opted to place the custom temporary, impregnated with antibiotic ointment, as you can see here in place. Once that's been secured down to 15 newton centimeters, the soft tissue is reapproximated with the sutures to restore the papilla and the architecture preoperatively. And the screw hole is again sealed, either utilizing the cotton pellet or in this case, Teflon tape. The temporary is filled with the temporary cement of choice, in this case, Temp Bond Clear. The temporary delivered by gentle finger pressure, and the result is as seen here. The biotemp and the custom temporary abutment have already begun to develop the soft tissue architecture in this area, which will facilitate the restoration and the impression taking at a future stage.